So in the first two parts of these videos, part one and part two, I talked about my banjo and uh, I talked about uh, a pre-war Gibson and was it a pre-war Gibson or not? And uh, somewhere along the way we kind of figured out that it wasn't a pre-war Gibson. So when I figured out finally that this banjo was uh, not a Gibson, and it probably wasn't a single shred of it, a Gibson. It was a little bit upsetting to me because I bought it under the idea that it was. Uh, reliable people told me it was. Have no reason even today to doubt uh, their, you know, motivation. Uh, they they probably couldn't have known. And uh, so, you know, I've been playing the banjo now for in 2021 is uh, over. It's, uh, well, it's 41 years. And uh, I've been playing this banjo 38 of those 41 years. So in all of those years, I kind of thought that maybe a little bit of it was Gibson. I never thought all of it was. I didn't think the neck. I thought maybe the rim might have been a Gibson, uh, but not much, not much else. Maybe the flange. So when I figured out it wasn't a Gibson uh, and the, the label on the inside was fake, I was uh, I was right disappointed to say the least. And, you know, it's kind of like being married to somebody for 38 years and they've been lying to you the whole time. So what I did is I took this banjo and I sent it away, sent it down to Chesterfield, Virginia. And there's a guy down there that does terrific uh, work on banjos, pre-war banjos. Uh, he's the, the best of the best in my book. It, he's, his name is Richie Dotson. And he has a, uh, little company down there called, uh, uh, Acoustic Box LLC. I highly encourage you to, to look him up. He's got a, a, uh, if you look up Richie Dotson, on YouTube, he's got videos of some of his work and some of the instruments that he's played. So after about six months, I've got the banjo back. And uh, because I was upset with uh, the way the Gibson was on it, but it wasn't real. Uh, you know, back in the day, Bill Monroe wasn't so happy with Gibson. And he took his pocket knife and gouged the uh, Gibson uh, logo out of the peg head on his mandolin and uh, kind of went in a similar riot route but uh, Richie uh, did a nice job with it a super nice job and I took the Gibson name off of the peg head took the master tone label uh, block off and replaced it and I had some other work done and so take a look see at it here And there it is. Richie had it about six months. It was worth the wait. This is the Bella Voce inlay. It's essentially a Gibson constructed banjo. There's some uh, there's some differences, but they're they're not major. the The spirit of the banjo build is without a doubt Gibson, and the you know. Uh, the construction is pretty close. There's a few areas that deviates just a little bit. Uh, so, put my grandfather's name in here and down here on the uh, where the master tone block was. My grandfather's name was William Height, and he had a number of kids. My mother was uh, one of those, and uh, when I was coming along, I had uncles and aunts down in western North Carolina, and uh, they turned me on to bluegrass music, and gave me old records of Flat and Scruggs and Bill Monroe and different ones, and I got interested in the five-string banjo, and if I haven't mentioned it, uh, again, you know, 2021, I've been playing the, 
the banjo 41 years and 38 of it has been with this uh, this banjo right here so uh, Richie took the master tone label off the inside uh, down inside the rim here it was painted kind of yellow uh, he took that out and stained it uh, he uh, straightened the neck a little bit it was a little bit bowed he took a uh, fist string capo off and put uh, these are railroad spikes and what you do is you slide your string under there and so when you capo let's say here you pinch this string right here and uh, put new tuning pegs on it these are five star tuning pegs which I believe is Stuart McDonald this tuning peg was okay and uh, uh, Richie Dotson is known not just for his banjo work uh, in building and repairing, but he has a bridge. Maybe you can see his name on it. Old Wood Bridge. And uh, this is just an excellent bridge. Brings a lot of great sound to the five string banjo. I think it's the best uh, banjo bridge you can buy on the market. He cleaned it up. New frets. I had him put a, there was a black uh, pet, uh, truss rod cover. Uh, I had him put a truss rod cover made of mother of pearl, which is what the inlay is, which I think really accentuates the inlay up here. He shaved the neck down. The neck was kind of fat. Some banjos will have a real fat neck on them, and uh, this one was no exception. And uh, he trimmed that thing down, and it's a mahogany neck. Uh, Honduras mahogany pretty certain about that refinished it he did not refinish my resonator but I don't know that it needed refinished it's uh, uh, the resonators are veneer but uh, it's mahogany as well and uh, some people like a mahogany banjo because uh, they have a nice uh, tone to them other banjos are made of maple and uh, and uh, others are made of walnut. Uh, this banjo sounded great before I sent it down to him. It sounds just as good now, if not better. And uh, so that's it. The uh, William Height banjo, formerly a Gibson uh, copy, if you will, it was not pre-war. The only thing pre-war about this thing is, I say it's pre-Falklands. You know, <laughs> pre-Gulf War. But uh, I think it's a great banjo. And what I'm going to do here, I'm um, going to get my daughter to hold the camera for me. And I um, haven't been practicing here like maybe I should. But I'm going to uh, sit over there in that chair and pull this thing out and try to pick a tune. This is the final part of this uh, series on pre-war Gibson, fake or real. And I can tell you this. What I got here. It's not a Gibson banjo, but it's a real banjo, and it's a real good banjo. So, hope you'd enjoy the video. I'm just going to play a tune and kind of go out with it. Again, I encourage you to look up Richie Dotson, and uh, somewhere in this video, I'll have his contact info. And uh, if you're interested in really good five-string banjos and five-string banjo works, and if you need a bridge for your banjo, a really good bridge... Uh, he's the guy So let me uh, get my daughter to hold the camera here a little bit and I'll attempt to pick a little tune keep in mind that uh, I'm not a very good banjo player But I'll do the best I can so appreciate you watching these videos all three of them part one two and this is part three and uh, Talk to you later